If I never make it back home Yes, it was meant to be I've been sent by the Lord with the destiny I'm chasing demons out of this land Under authority of God's right hand And I've been down this road a time or two at least And I'm not giving up for angel man nor beast Cause I'm a devil chasing something a gun. Ain't giving up till the good Lord come back to get me. Take me home. I'm part of God's army. Ha! Here we come. Hey guys, what's going on? Tom Dunn back here uh, for uh, the second night of the interview with Ella Gariva. And uh, if you missed the first interview, you got to go back, watch the archives last night. So uh, real quick, guys, it's the same old thing. Uh, through the Black, throughtheblack.com is the website. That's where you can go find all of our stuff, like our shirts, our movies, all of that stuff. And that's where you can go still get registered for the Through the Black conference. It's called Out of the Darkness. It's going to be in Brookville, Ohio. March 31st, April 1st. It's next week. It's a week and a couple days. So it's not too late to get registered and it's not too late to buy streaming. If you can't make it, if you're somewhere uh, in the world where it's just too difficult to travel that far, then you can stream the conference. There's an option for that too. So go check that out at throughtheblack.com. You'll see the big out of the darkness banner. Click on that. It'll take you to a page. Also, the schedule is up there. And you can see the topics that everybody's talking about. Everybody wants to know what time everybody's talking, all that stuff. So anyway, uh, guys, you can go check that out. Um, so anyway, uh, looking forward to seeing so many people out at the conference. Uh, it's it's just going to be great. It's This is really the first conference that Through the Black has ever done in this capacity. And we have been thinking about doing one for years. We were involved with Russ a few years ago doing the International Conference on Satanic Ritual Abuse. Um, this is kind of the sequel to that. But anyway, I mean, we have the Shatter Ops team there and we have, you know, so so many of the, of the same people. Uh, the Through the Black team is going to be there. And this is the first time our team has done a conference where our people are speaking like Colleen and Vicky Joy. Okay, Pastor Sean. Of course, we're going to have um, uh, Pastor Mike Spalding, Coach Dave Daubemeyer, Sherry Clausen is going to be there. Worked with years um, with Russ Dizdar, then Dr. Gregory Reed, um, just a pioneer and a legend in this field. In um, not only is he a survivor, but he's an investigator. He's a prayer warrior. He is so many things. He's an amazing author. So uh, anyway, guys, um, uh, that conference coming up a week in a couple days. I hope that we see you there. Um, it's going to be amazing. Make sure you check out the, the list, uh, the schedule, and you can see what everybody's going to be talking about. It's going to be some really, really um, good stuff. So here we are, part two of this interview. And as I mentioned last night, this has been a long time coming, and we've been planning this out for a while. Um, Ella has uh, finally uh, a couple months ago reached out to me and uh, we were had a conversation through um, uh, messages back and forth and we were able to finally get these interviews uh, nailed down. Uh, as I mentioned last night, there was some hesitation, um, but we were finally able to, uh, to get the uh, time scheduled and to go through with it. And um, this interview tonight is going to be an hour and a half long, so I don't want to waste too much time there. I do want to mention that there is some audio problems towards the end of it on Ella's side, and some of the stuff is just kind of garbled, and it's really hard to understand. So um, anyway, guys, um, both of these interviews, there's just so many different things that um, we wanted to ask and we didn't get to ask them all, but we kind of hear some behind the scenes uh, stories just about um, what it was, um, 
what it was like to be there, some, you know, some more evidence is presented. And all of this stuff is, by the way, documented on her website, HampsteadExposed.com. Okay, we mentioned that several times. You can go there, you can see the documents, you can support the campaign um, to uh, for the legal fight for the children. Okay, so uh, this woman has really been through hell on earth. And uh, I mean, it's heartbreaking to hear her story. It was difficult to ask some of these questions, guys. Um, uh, I, I, I don't necessarily like doing it and I'm not necessarily trying to, I'm not trying to create a media moment, but I'm trying to ask the questions that I think people want to know, you know? So uh, that's what I tried to do. There was a lot more that I want to ask. I'm not, uh, the last thing I want to do is exploit somebody, you know, but uh, both of these nights were very emotional, especially the first night, last night's interview. I was very emotional and I really had to fight back just, um, uh, just getting emotional and crying just because I'm so heartbroken for what she's been through. So, folks, we want to hear what you think. When was, you know, uh, when did you first hear about the case? What did you think when you saw the um, the disclosures of um, Elisa and Gabriel? Okay, and what do you what do you think about the interview tonight? We want to hear from you, and uh, we again we appreciate the support. We appreciate the prayer, um, everything that you guys do, guys. We couldn't do this without you. Uh, we get so many messages saying, how do you do what you do? Or you guys, you know, I'm so glad you're doing what you're doing. It's such, it's so important. Well, the way we do it is by the grace of God. Um, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's hard. Sometimes it is hard. And I don't want to say it's easy, but sometimes it is easy. Okay. But it's a fight and there's an attack from all different angles. Okay. Okay. And especially psychologically, emotionally, the enemy tries to break us down. But by God's grace, we're able to move on and keep strong. So, guys, um, we appreciate the prayer support. We appreciate the financial support. We couldn't do this without you guys. Um, I'm just, I'm just blown away by the love that we get from you guys, the encouragement, all of that. Um, it means the world to us. Um, this interview has been a long, long time, um, coming and we finally got to do it and, um, we've done two parts and both Ella and Vicky and I agree that we want to do more interviews, at least a part three. And we don't know when that's going to happen, but we want to do that. So, uh, guys, um, thanks again. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. Um, guys, when you share these videos, that's how we, that's how the word gets out. And we make friends, we make new friends. There have been so many people in the last month that have tuned in and clicked on and found out about through the black for the first time. That's so exciting to me. So, um, guys, anyway, um, this is our, this is, uh, Vicky and I's last interview before the conference next week. We, we do have the audio topsy show on Friday, but, um, anyway, this is the last thing. We're taking a little break. We're going to do the conference. We're taking a break after the conference. I've got a little bit of work to do. I've got to do another talk for another conference. And then for the for the Skywatch conference, I've got to get that finished. And then we've got some boots on the ground type stuff that we got to do. And then we got some family stuff that we got to do. So uh, we're going to be gone for a little bit, but we'll be checking back in. We are making plans. We're having meetings about how do we expand what we do. We want to expand through the black. We also want to reach more people effectively with the gospel, with the training, with all the information that we're putting out there, guys. Um, we, again, I know I sound like a broken record. We couldn't do this without you, period. And when I say that we do this, we're doing this together because you guys are sending us the messages and telling us we're out there. We're doing this too. We're praying. We're doing the warfare. Um, we're running in, we're witnessing to people. We're doing evangelism. We're exposing the darkness. We're standing up against the evil. So guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say this before I, um, 
before we uh, um, go here is say a prayer for Ella. Uh, she needs our prayers. She needs our prayer support. Um, I can't imagine what it's like for her to, to go through what she's been through. And she's an extremely strong woman. woman. Um, and, you know, our show here is uh, mostly Christians, okay? Ella um, is not a Christian. Um, she is a strong woman. Uh, she needs our prayers, okay? And um, she is, uh, you know, still fighting for justice for her children. And when I say that, that she that she's not a Christian, I'm not trying to, that's not an insult to her or anything, but I'm just mentioning um, that for, you know, because um, uh, you guys understand, you know, what we do here. And uh, we, we just want to be an encouragement to everybody. And we believe that when we pray to Jesus, okay, he hears our prayers and he answers those prayers. We have absolutely no doubts about it. So, um, but, uh, and you guys, you guys completely understand what I mean when I say that. So uh, guys, say, say prayers for her. And I know that you have been praying for Elisa and Gabriel, asking Jesus to intervene. And uh, uh, folks, that I believe is, is the, the hope that we have on this earth, okay? Um, we have a hope after this life is over, but um, we have hope now. We can overflow with hope that everything is going to work out. So anyway, guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the support, for the prayers for Through the Black, for the prayers for Ella and Elisa and Gabriel. And uh, guys, this is part two of the interview with Ella Gariva, the mother of the Hampstead whistleblower children, Elisa and Gabriel. We love you guys, and uh, we'll see many of you guys next week at the conference. Here you go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Through the Black. Here we are again with part two of our interview uh, with Ella, the mother of the brave whistleblower children who exposed um, – uh, the the case in Hampstead, uh, London, and they exposed what was going on in their school. They exposed uh, what was happening to them and to other children and how it was being done. Uh, Ella, thank you so much uh, for coming back again. Uh, we're so uh, glad to have you on. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity and... Um and supporting this case uh, wholeheartedly. I really, really do appreciate it. And uh, all the people who are watching us as well um, with uh, united efforts and um, putting our spirits and souls together and, um, and uh, using our God's given spiritual power, uh, I believe that we can actually create a different reality and to well, the table is already turned. The God is on our side. Now it's up to us, up to people to actually catch up and get together and um, and put a stop and to make the changes in this world. Agree, agree. It's our time to stand up for the children and the victims like never before. Um, Ella... Our, our channel here at Through the Black, we have for years just um, been touched, um, have our hearts touched about this story. And when we when we heard about this, uh, I mean, we immediately wanted to bring exposure to it. Uh, when we attempted to do that, people, groups and uh, they're called trolls kind of came out of nowhere who didn't even know about us or know who we were um, came to try to uh, stop what we were doing. Uh, there seemed to be a very sophisticated um, network of people that were put in place to stop the truth from coming out. Um, and I know that you've experienced this uh, and many other podcasters, uh, YouTube content creators 
have experienced these attacks from this group of people who um, are pretty much uh, uh, non-existent anymore uh, in the way that they existed a few years ago. Okay, so um, and in that capacity, uh, those people would attack. So um, anyway, why? If if and you you alluded to this yesterday, if this is such a hoax, why such the great effort uh, and the go to great lengths to cover this up and to try to um, to uh, what am I discredit those who would try to tell the truth of the uh, what the children revealed? Yeah, it's it's a, such a such a an, a such an important uh, point. Um, and uh, to be uh, truth to be said uh, is the same the same thing going is going on now it hasn't finished it wasn't just back then it's maybe a different set of of the people but it's still going on for example um i've been um, i've been contacted uh, about uh, 9 months ago for an interview uh, for doc documentary by um by um, a group called Totus 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 Media, I believe, um, and um, so I had several private conversations, which uh, were recorded again without my consent and without my knowledge. And uh, that same group, they wanted to come to see me and film me and so on. Anyhow, uh, mm, when I started to question, you know what the documents are about, what, who's going to be involved. I learned that, oh yeah, we've got to interview the other side. We've got to, in, we got to show, anyway, I started to smell something fishy there and rightly so. A little while ago, uh, I believe like, like really several months ago, there was a series of the interviews when, where everything was kind of cut, cut and pasted, you know, and uh, the same thing, I believe uh, they had a conversation with Abraham as well, the same thing, you know, inserting certain, th in certain, certain things from the, uh, from the children testimonies, from, uh, from a recording with, um, I believe, Jean, Jean Clément Yahiru, it was the first officer that we contacted. Anyway, Again, it was another attempt to to show us in a in a bad in a wet wet way. Again, there was a, um, the similar articles in the um, major newspapers. Um, I believe Telegraph. Um, what was it? Um, Daily Telegraph, and it was another one. The Guardian, Daily, maybe. Daily, Guardian, or Daily Mail. Again, and you know the same newspapers again. And that, there was more, and um, and again, there are many agents uh, disappearing on um, social media, um, TikToks, you know, like uh, just recently I've seen something. So there is an attack again, and it's quite massive. I mean, this, uh, it, it requires a, a lot of funds, and as they say, you know, follow the money. I mean, why, it's like, a, it's a big, a big expense, you know, big investments. So who is interested in it? And you know, some people started to investigate who is actually behind the, this uh, this uh, Tutuas uh, media. And actually, it goes um, it goes to to very high up positions, you know, to high positions in BBC, and even goes to secret services or people who's been um, very high position in uh, secret services. So um, we're talking. I mean, this is no secret that this kind of abuse is going uh, on very high level. I mean, we've seen it with the Pizzagate and with, uh, with other cases. And um, like, for example, um, Edward Heath, the prime minister of Britain just before Margaret Thatcher, he was, um, as, as, as we know, he was uh, um, a uh, sexual uh, rapist of the children. I mean, don't you think that in his time of power, don't you think he put a certain um, certain um, um, 
laws and certain um, establishments and certain people in the high positions to actually safeguard this whole network of the um, child abuse, child trafficking. I mean, don't you think that with his death or whatever, um, the whole thing stopped? I mean, and it wasn't, it wasn't just only one person, there was members of parliament involved in these things. And we know that um, uh, there was, um, uh, who is this uh, guy, member of parliament? Um, oh, it will come to me. So um, the witness, he, uh, this boy who, who was abused and now, uh, now adult, he actually came and uh, with disclosures and he was talking about um, uh, very similar tattoos on his private parts. Uh, the same as children um, uh, been describing the tattoos uh, of, uh, of well devil tattoos and uh, demon tattoo tattoos with all kind of piercings and I mean these details um, how how on earth should those details and the thing is those details will be very uh, very easily uh, um, um, how to say, uh, uh, proved or disproved, right, by the witnesses. And then we find the whole series of uh, um, trials that happen, happened in the United Kingdom a little while ago. Uh, there were several people who been um, uh, imprisoned, um, who's been involved in this case, including this guy from the States uh, um, who came to investigate. So... And as I know, there was a uh, there was a, um, there was a massive attack on the public, who were talking about the case, who was discussing it in the in the media. On one day, I've been told there was a well. This is information quite. Uh, it's not uh, a rumor. This is a qu information um, quite. Um, uh, how to say? I mean, I've got it. Through a, 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 through a person who has actually been arrested, who's been helping me in this case. So on one day, they arrested like a thousand people who's been just talking about the case, discussing it. I mean, there was like multiple prosecutions of the, member, of the concerned members of the public. So, so why is such a massive attack on, on, on the members of the public, on, on the concerns good willing people who who are concerned about the safety of, uh, with the safety of the children um why to imprison those people why to gag them uh why to put them uh, uh, to give them cautions live cautions not to talk about the case yeah. i don't think it's telling that there was uh, obviously a, a, a it's obvious intention to cover this case up for what reason? To protect who? Exactly. And who is, yeah. and who is behind it? I mean, um, this is, I mean, just, you just turn your logic on and you can see things. I mean, it's all, it's all white, it's, it's all white threads everywhere. Ella, um, one of the <laughs> unique things about this case, and we, we've talked about this a lot over the years um, on, um, on our show here um, is the details that the children gave. Okay. Um, when those videos were released or leaked, okay. Uh, your airport videos and then the interviews with the uh, police officers with the um, uh, DC. Okay. There in the Barna police station, when those were released, we got to hear what, carers and foster parents have been hearing for years and then they tell those stories secondhand so we got to hear them firsthand from the children and you mentioned uh as an example one of the pieces of evidence um were the tattoos and um you had the children uh draw pictures of this for evidence can you uh, kind of um, explain how that came about. You were talking to the children and then they gave 
they gave detail about tattoos and piercings. And again, we already went over this yesterday. Um, it was, you know, it was, you couldn't believe, okay, this is happening, but how did that, how did you find out about the tattoos and the, and the piercings and that? Well, I would say that all, uh, a lot of this information was volunteered by the children. I mean, it's, once they've been able to talk, they talked. I mean, there were times where they were the program kicked in and I know exactly what was uh, the, um, how to say, the anchors of this programming. Children, for example, have been made to, to touch each other sexually five times a day. And either they did or they didn't, they were punished. The, uh, the, the uh, demon, the, the father, was making sure that they were doing this. And this is what's the anchors of the programming. So on one hand, they were trying to do that. They were following this pattern. And um, we started to notice that. And... Um, and break this pattern to make sure that they don't do it, that they, we, we watch them all the time or they're with us all the time. However, they didn't manage. And when they did happen, they all of a sudden, they, it was a, they were stuck. Um, they, they just didn't want to cooperate. However, so it was really kind of, it was on and off, on and off. But when they were talking, they were, when they were relaxed, the information just was flowing out of them. And um, to be honest, I, I don't really recall how it happened, how this information started to come out. But, um, but the children were talking about, they were giving very, very, um, very um, detailed information on how the abuse was going on. I mean... They were talking about leaking adults, privates, things like that. And in one of those disclosures, they, would, they talked about certain, um, certain things that those adults, um, the certain features <laughs> about f their physiology that came about. For example, the headmistress of the school, Katie, uh, Katie Forsdyke, she has um, irremovable... Um, pink uh, birthmark all over her intimate parts and uh, then the nurse uh, the nurse of the school um, has a, um, a mole of a uh, five dime queen and we asked Gabriel how how do you know it was that you know that big or or because she left she let me measure it with a ruler I mean things like that and, uh, and, and, and knowing the children, I mean, this is like, um, I mean, I know my children. <laughs> I know them like the back of my hand, you know, uh, like my palm. I know when they're lying, when they're telling the truth. I know they're all tricks. I mean, I've been living with them every day. And, um, and the innocence of Gabriel, how he was telling about all of those things was just, I mean, totally, totally um, heartbreaking, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, yeah. for them, they talk about as a, as, as a something, as a common detail of their life, as a something that happens like every day, something like another child would be talking about going to have ice cream on, or having um, a a parent to read them a book before they're going to sleep. I'm talking about in this kind of um, in this kind of um, in this kind of way, just like as a matter of fact. And um, and then little by little, ah, at some point um, uh, we asked them to draw to draw the picture of those tattoos that they were talking about, and I still have those drawings. And um, you know, in the website, by the way, in HampsteadExposed.com, um, there is an uh, there is a new tab where where um, the evidence um, is um, is published, including 
medical uh, examination. I'm not quite sure if you had um, re- uh, if you read that or look through. And um, I think I was good. They're supposed to be also those drawings, but if not, there were there were there were short videos on YouTube as well with those. Uh, I don't think they're there. And yeah, anyway. we have copies of the drawings. I've seen them, and um, they uh, and even I think it even has the names of the um, you know of who they are and uh, Mr. Hollings, uh, Mrs. Forstite, and exactly. Uh, mm-hmm. So. Uh, Ella, I don't know. There's a, there's a so many directions, so many things that we could talk about. Uh, yeah. One of the things I think it was Gabriel that said Wednesdays are the most busiest day of sex. And if I, I, I don't know if it was Elisa or Gabriel that said that, but they were again in their innocence talking about these things. Um, and what? Let me ask you this. I mean, there was there was some definite, you know, we're convinced that there was baby sacrifice, that there was abuse going on, and maybe some kind of a, some kind of a, a sex ring or something of people that came in from the outside on Wednesdays, and maybe they paid to abuse the children. What are your thoughts on what was going on there at that school? I always say is that, you know, it's not that, okay, what I think, my uh, my opinion as an adult is a one thing. However, I'm also, I'm also uh, consider myself as a voice for my children. Mm-hmm. I only can say what they told me as well. Um, and then later on, of course, I research, I cross reference, and I can see that this all it's already been existing before. So it's, it's, it's happened before those things in other cases. However, coming back to your question, they, they both actually said about Wednesday uh, being a sex day. And they told us that um, on Wednesday, there was um, um, various people who was visiting school uh, for a major sex party and um, and children actually been uh, prostituted to those adults who came for that certain entertainment and you know there were i have the whole i have notes upon notes with the names of the people where they came from where they work which police station they work and it looks like uh, several police stations around around the area. Members of the police that been involved, members of social services been involved, and uh, people who have been uh, working in local businesses. I mean, to be honest, I mean, I mean, the more now from 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 this the length of this eight years that. I've been I've been living through this nightmare really from you know the separation with the children and and uh, considering all of those facts I can see that it's it's an amazing thing how everybody been chosen for this role in a way I mean Alisa has an amazing memory amazing memory uh, photogra- photo- photographic memory, numbers. I mean, she could memorize a lot of numbers just like that. Uh, I remember when she was a little child, like maybe maybe one and a half, something like that. And G- G- Gabriel was even smaller. And I would take them, let's say, to the um, to the park by car. And on the way back, they were tired, and um, I thought it would be good to, for them to go to sleep, so I would like go around the circles, around the blocks uh, of the streets, just to make sure that, I mean, they, they like to fall asleep in the car, and then I would quietly take them into the house so they have a nap during a day after after running around in the park, for example. And, and there were a few times that 
Alisa was like, I mean, she's only like one and a half years old and I'm doing like, you know, big circles, not just around the house, but you know, in the area. And she's, no, no, mom, uh, this way, <laughs> we go to the house this way. I mean, the geography, everything, um, in, in the photography my memory is amazing. She gave so, so precise details about everything. Who was doing the camera? Who was the guy, the taxi driver, who was taking the babies from the Heathrow Airport, airport collecting, you know, from the, or from the courier companies? Which courier company has been involved bringing the, um, the injected infants by, by force in the boxes? I mean, and we, we know all this information now is there. When people talk about this, that people, children have been trafficking, trafficked in the box, uh, been sedated, right? So it's just so much details. How, how, how the children who, for example, could not to tolerate the abuse or the pain because it, I mean, this kind of abuse, it was a sadistic abuse. It was meant to be, to be super painful. It, it was meant to hurt children in, in every way. And this is actually, like, I suspect that it's not only satanic ritual abuse and there's all this kind of satanic horror thing with the blood sacrifice. I believe that this is a mean uh, to, to program uh, those, those child witnesses uh, uh, probably you heard about uh, such thing as trauma-based mind control, uh, you know, the monarch uh, mind control programming and things like that. And um, and uh, all these things being used to program the subconscious mind to uh, decompartmentalize consciousness um, and um, where under extreme trauma, the uh, conscious mind mind um, to be able to deal with the trauma it becomes compartmentalized like a um, honey honeycomb and each each of these compartments could be programmed in certain way and we know those mind control slaves for example who has been programmed in 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 many 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 ways we know even the films you know this uh, what is it called born 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 um, identity it's actually about that where, where a person doesn't even remember what they do. And so what I've learned as well, there is a huge army of those mind control slaves are existing in the world right now, doing, um, involved in a uh, drug industry, involved in, um, in a hired, um, you know, those hired killers. And, uh, and those people are actually slaves. They, they could be triggered by certain programs. The programs could be changed. So there is many layers that we can we can touch on in this case. So many layers, and um, so I mean it's easy to get actually lost yeah. to, um, to, to talk about so many things here. Ella, and no, I'm glad to, that you're talking about all this. Um, the listeners of our show are very familiar with all these things that you're saying. And um, our mentor, his name was Russ Dizdar. He passed away about a year and a half ago. Um, but he wrote the book on this. He wrote a book called The Black Awakening and about the super soldiers, okay, and the programming. And he spent years and years and years um, trying to help the survivors and expose the, uh, the satanic networks. So, um, uh, you know, what, one of the things that goes along with this and the children um, spoke about this very briefly was that this was a generational thing and that they were they said that they were being trained to do this to their children one day when they got older and it came back from uh, their grandparents on their father's side. Can you speak to that that uh, it's a it was a generational thing? Look, I I really, I really don't know. I mean, we can we can we can assume certain things. However, I feel 
that in their programming, and it was definitely programming, I think that there was certain information installed just in case if, if the children will be made to disclose, the disclosure will be so crazy and so unrealistic that the people who would listen to them would simply not believe them. Interesting. And I, I, yeah, and this is this is very interesting aspect of the case, which I don't think I actually discussed that before a lot, and I don't think it's been touched on too much, where children started to involve everybody in this. However, in their minds, it was so, it was completely enveloping their life, apart from um, their life with me, for example. And Alisa and Gabriel were the only two children out of all this, of, from this group, where one parent was involved and another one wasn't. And by the way, by the way, looking back, they were trying to approach me on several occasions to get me involved as well. Mm -hmm. And Damon was trying to get me involved on many occasions as well. It is at that time, I felt something and I felt something very uncomfortable. So I declined those invitations to go to very special parties where very special people are invited, things like that. I've been approached by other parents. So what I'm saying, all of the other children, apart from my children, both both parents were involved. And I do believe that that maybe sometimes they were generational. However, I also feel that many of those people involved, they came into that for money and power. Because mm -hmm. as the, for example, the same as uh, in the Masonic organizations, people going there for that, for that, for that group that gave them that the contacts, the, it, it um, put them in some certain businesses, and this is how it all works. They're helping each other, right? And of course, we know as well, like once you're in it, it's almost impossible to get out of it. Uh, and then people learn about all of this, and uh, it's like um, um, it's like a blood connection, you know, <laughs> it's like a criminal network, which is once you're in it, that's it. And so those uh, those people who have been involved, they're all, um, you know, wealthy, affluent, uh, big businesses people. And but coming back to your question in, in regards this situation about um, the generational abuse in uh, the father's side, I mean, I'm not quite sure. This is my honest answer because I do believe there was a sadistic abuse. I'm not quite sure if there was a sexual abuse, there was a satanic abuse, but it was definitely a, um, a quite extreme uh, physical abuse. Because I do remember um, Damon was talking about his, um, his father who was um, uh, beating children to unconsciousness and his mother as well. So I'm not quite sure how, how much truth in that. I believe that uh, demoness simply, simply came from um, very, very um, poor and very disadvantages, disadvantages, uh, how to pronounce it correctly, background. Uh, he's, uh, he came from a very poor area in Sheffield, uh, which is um, uh, some mining, mining areas. And he was um, he was good looking, and he used his look as he as 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 the way to get out of it. Hmm. And he was in um, um, his modeling, but this is what he gave me. But as the situation, as the more information came out afterwards, um, he was involved in uh, what is that a male striptease. And I'm not quite sure what kind of modeling, but I think it was more like pornography. 
and he talks a lot about pornography, even in his um, interview uh, to the police, <laughs> one interview that he, was, he, he came with his law and he was able to leave any time after the, the uh, after children were taken into care, into the social uh, services care. He's talking still there uh, about the pornography and how he using pornography to to test his uh, marketing ideas, whatever he was doing. But in reality, he was doing child pornography as well, where I've been told that it's like some supplements and things like that. So how much, in, I don't, I don't, I don't, to be honest, I don't believe there was generational satanic abuse running in the family. I think he came in this network for money and for power. And he was really, um, it was definitely complex about it, about not having enough, um, about wanting more, about wanting to become rich, about wanting to become famous, about wanting to become this big actor. And you can obviously see his acting skills. You know. However, you know, after uh, just recently, I've seen. Um, I mean, he's he's there in the in the in the in the um, social media. I've seen some ad adverts uh, of him um, in being in British Airways. I mean, he's obviously been given a lot of jobs after the case, as well as uh, Steve Martin grown in his uh, Masonic lodge uh, several steps. Uh, right away because there was um i even have like screenshots somewhere about uh, he's been in one lodge he's been uh, like occupying this position and after his big achievements in closing the case how he jumped several uh, um, several stages up so yeah so well we'll ella um I anyway, for anybody that's just tuning in, we're talking to Ella, the mother of the Hampstead children, Elisa and Gabriel. Uh, many have seen this uh, uh, very familiar video of the children disclosing what happened to them. Her website is hampsteadexposed.com, and you can go there and you can look at the evidence. You can look at the documents that she put together and uh, we want to ask you about all this, uh, Ella, and just um, uh, how you put the website together and and uh, about the evidence that's on there. I want to give uh, Vicky a chance to kind of jump in here, though, and uh, we want to make sure that we, we cover all the, these things. And you're already answering many of my questions uh, before I even ask them. So, Vic? Yeah, Ella, I was hoping maybe for um, listeners new to the case or Americans in general, uh, to contextualize this a little bit, you know, in the United States, if a child told this story and they said, I'm from Mayberry or I'm from, you know, uh, Springfield, Iowa, you know, you know, they may or may not be believed. But if the child told this kind of a story and then they said it happened in the Bohemian Grove in California or it happened in Montauk, New York, <clears throat> all of a sudden it would create a. Uh, vast more amounts of believability because people know that those areas are associated with evil. And, and so it would, it adds credence to the, to the stories. And a lot of Americans are unfamiliar with the area of Hampstead in London in general. And from, from what I understand, it's a rather affluent place. There's a lot of A-list UK celebrities that live there. It's kind of like the 90210 zip code of, of London, which I, I, frankly think adds credence to the story because that's where those types of people gather. But for, for those not familiar with Hampstead, can you just give a little bit of background as to the affluency of this place that this like put the set the scene kind of for where this school was? Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. I mean, there are several um, uh, quite expensive areas in London. Well, there's central London, Mayfair, and another very rich area where uh, we have um, judges, uh, big lawyers. Uh, I'm talking about, you know, the presidents of the big companies, uh, um, stars, so on, like, uh, you know, David Be Beckham li lives there with his uh, spice push and uh, things like that, you know, big actors, uh, big directors, uh, producers. 
um i mean there is kind of like bohemian part like artistic part but it's like all kind of this money 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 so yeah i mean and funny enough hampstead is the biggest concentration of the school i mean there are schools there are maybe could be like two three schools on the on the one block of street uh, so is the is is a is the most concentrated um, school area in London as well. Mm. So and by the way, by the way, um, what children disclose as well that it's not only uh, Christchurch School has been has been involved in that. There were other schools involved, and um, and the teachers been migrating from one school to another and the children been taken to other schools so there was like it's 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 more than just one school for sure they named at least 10 wow. and uh, so i think to be honest what came in this in this case is only the tip of the iceberg yeah in in Hampstead, in London, and in the world, and um, and for example, ju just after the case broke, there was um, the was um, they found this guy with uh, like um, a thousand and thousand I mean, uh, pedophile uh, uh, with thousands of images of you know uh, indecent images of uh, of the of the children. Uh, just just in the same area, a couple of blocks away from the school. I mean, it's just it's just too much, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe that that um, I mean, and 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 all the these parents they, they live in this area. And for example, apart from the big day of uh, sex on Wednesdays, children were taken out during school hours out of the school. For abuse, um, and um, like one of the main members of this um, group, um, like was providing um, or maybe still providing the uh, involved in um, uh, in the property business, who was um, supplying empty properties for the abuse as well, and. Now as well, after after so many years of research. I believe also that this Hampstead group was it's one of the many groups and probably low low lowest part of it, lowest part of the pyramid. It goes go it goes way, way higher. And the reason this whole uh, why the case was covered up, why is such a big uh, and immense uh, funds Go, goes into into covering it up and uh, to all this persecution of the people who talk about it um uh, 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 protect uh, protecting those abusers um why was it's, it's a massive massive operation why so many funds because i mean once 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 one part of the chain uh break uh breaks the whole the whole thing you know gonna fall apart mm -hmm. So this is why it's not that uh, Demon is any big big fish in it. Probably not at all. He just probably the leader of one 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 little group. Yeah. And um, but they all. I mean, it has to be covered. It has to be covered because otherwise these people are gonna talk on other people. You know, yeah. uh, this is how it works. I mean, it's like a it's a it's a it's a it's a underground underground. Um, um international criminal network that includes um murders of the children sexual exploitation organ trafficking um uh, child pornography snuff movie making i mean children were quite detailed about that all of this being filmed and actually before school years when when demon had access to the court he's been given one whole saturday every week um children been taken to another ring where 
I believe they were uh, they were making porno uh, pornography um, uh, pornography film, child pornography film, and snuff movie films. And it's all of this is a it's a big business. Apparently, why one uh, uh, the copy of the snuff movie films uh, could cost up to fifty thousands. So I mean, we're talking about huge, huge, massive business. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of money involved in that. So yeah. they cannot, they cannot, they cannot, they cannot, uh, they cannot risk for this case to uh, to to leak to any of this information to leak. Although it does happen anyway. The cat is how do you say the cat is out of the bag. In America, when we've heard about these satanic ritual abuse cases, uh, we always hear about uh snuff films and child pornography being made they go hand in hand and we see this not only in america but around the world it's it's just part of their um uh their mo so um let's let's just take a minute and talk about the website because the website ella is so extensive okay um, you can, uh, there, there's kind of like a table of contents on there and you can kind of take a look at the document and it goes down and breaks down everything, um, there. And I don't have, um, so, um, it, it just explains, uh, the documents, the police interviews, uh, child witness police interviews. And, uh, folks, I'm talking about, uh, ham, um, Hampstead exposed, uh, dot com is the website. And it says children's crime reports, uh, Justice Palfley, uh, a family or criminal case, final uh, conclusions, new evidence, uh, organized child sexual abuse in the media, and uh, mother's final plea. So I'm just kind of giving an overview of what they can see on the website. Thank but, you. Um, the evidence that was disclosed is is just so much. And... Um, uh, it, it's just amazing. And I think that's what's unique about this case, because sometimes all we have is enough information for a headline and that's it. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we have tons of evidence in the disclosures. Um, there's a part on there that says new evidence. Um, as much information as we have, um, can you kind of share about the new evidence uh, that that is on the website? Yeah, yeah, I will, I will, I will answer your question. But just, I would like to to mention something. Yeah, because the disclosures are completely substantiated with uh, documented evidence, and this is so important because it doesn't matter how much they talk about in BBC and all this, uh, Diamond's interviews about how he was falsely abused. It's all blah blah blah. It's all just the words. Mm -hmm. Where we had, uh, we have a uh, hard evidence here. That irrefutable evidence. You cannot run away. You cannot do anything. You cannot manipulate it anyhow. And yes, there was um, in regards to new evidence. I mean, you probably remember when um, the children were showed up in um, this eBay video. I don't know if you yes. seen that. Yes. Yes. Now there was um, apparently this. Um, a wonderful slime company, which uh, so, uh, allegedly uh, won some some kind of eBay reward, and um, and they were invited for. And this is like we've seen it a couple of minutes of uh, uh, demon demon with the children and all the names names uh, been changed and probably their names been changed officially. Who knows? Um, and so. Then we started to investigate that and found out that yes, the slime company, you know, had um, has been has been renting a certain area in that particular shopping center, and not just that, it's been they've been traveling around the country, making uh, so-called spooky slime uh, slime parties around the country um, in, uh, um, in 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 um, in various places. Um, I mean, slime parties with the children, with the in the hospitals, in churches, and we could, we we suspect that there was um, uh, maybe money laundering involved in that through mm -hmm. those parties, and um, 
I mean, there was a lot of information came out since. Like, for example, there was um, uh, one guy in Brighton. Uh, I'm not going to mention his name because he, he's suffered enough already. He's been prosecuted, you know, gagged, da, da, da. I think been fined. However, um, Damon, when he, um, he, made, uh, he made a claim about this guy for harassment, but he was just simply talking about the case and about the facts of the case. And um, so nowadays, when a uh, police making a taking statement from the victim or witness, now they have this uh, video inserted in their uniform. So anyway, before, before the trial of this guy, uh, he shared it privately uh, around a certain people or kind of supporters and I watched those videos where actually Damon is talking to this woman so he's talking a lot there and who he's giving a lot of information uh, deliberately on or just because he's uh, like about to talk but um, so he talks about the slime parties and apparently children were um, um, I mean, used for uh, child labor here. I mean, they were made to. They were making those uh, those uh, slime, whatever things uh, themselves uh, outside their school hours. So then we discovered as well there was a company with. Um, uh, with the same name, you see, when children, before ch around children, when children were still young, uh, we opened the company. Or Damon asked me to open the company, being a director in this company, where he was uh, selling supplements. I mean, that was kind of like little family business, supposedly. But we later found out that the same business were later opened in New York with um, at least uh, 100,000 or in balance um, with a virtual office in Fifth Avenue or virtual or real office on the Fifth Avenue in New York. I mean, there is look, there is a lot of details in this new evidence. Right, so right. I do, I do um, suggest that people just go and just learn about all this because we can otherwise talk about this for hours. Sure, sure. And another thing that we found out, a very interesting fact, by the way, uh, before even children were uh, were start, well went to the school, like that school where was inviting this band. The satanic band that been performing in the school, um, and um, it's a it's a it's a known um, satanic band with um, you know with the lyrics specific lyrics and so on. So the school been involved in that even beforehand. So this this uh, group been existing there already. And wow. uh, yeah, so. So I want to, um, again, folks, we're talking to Ella, um, and uh, her website is hampsteadexposed.com. And uh, this, uh, this website is very extensive. It gives you all the information uh, on the case, the evidence, uh, how you can sign the petitions for the, um, uh, the UN petition and the UK uh, petition, and also how you can support uh, the, their campaign, uh, their legal campaign to fight for the children, okay, and to bring exposure uh, to this in, in every way, you know, possible. Uh, you can, you know, even on the uh, website, there's an introduction by Ella there, and she explains everything and talks about the document and the website. Mm -hmm. So, Ella, um, again, I want to I want to go back again and just ask um, get your comment on a couple things that I just thought were so extraordinary when Elisa is explaining how Miss Martin, the school nurse, 
injects the babies and where she injects them at. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, don't, I don't have to say this to you or the listeners tonight. When you watch that video, it's so compelling. Um, the first time that we heard about it was when we saw those, saw those interviews. But do you remember when she explained that to you maybe and you weren't recording or, or I mean, I know that you guys, you kind of interviewed them. And one of the strategies that you had is you separated the children and you asked them separately to see if their stories corroborated. So can you, can you kind of speak to that? Well, we, we, by the way, we only did recording when we were coming back to London. This is the time when we just realized that we have everything on notes and, uh, you know, we're going back and this is the, we were, I mean, that was a, that was a, we had a different, various, various scenario of how we wanted to handle, handle this. So anyway, the the last decision, the final, the final decision was to go back to London and to report this um, uh, to the police. And this is the time that we started to say, well, look, when we've got to do some, we've got to record it somehow uh, and quickly. So we were recording on the whole on the a whole hour journey back to London. We were recording it. This is the only time we went the, we done the videos. But uh, before that, of course when we realize that children sometimes do lie and do manipulate because they're getting scared, then we started to separate them and ask them separately. Like, for example, I would talk to Alisa and Gabriel would speak to, uh, to Gabriel or others, uh, uh, others other way. And then we would talk between us and um, compare what we've got. And... Um, and uh, this is how we just wanted to make sure uh, about certain facts and um, yes and um, and um, talking about the injection I mean this is came first came when Gabriel said that he could not handle the pain and he was screaming too much and obviously they didn't want any screaming going on so this is the time when he was injected and um, he was describing how he felt uh, it was some it was a sedative med medication and this was something in between um, sleep and uh, awakening so and after that he felt like he was described against as a being drunk and then again we ask him, but how do you know when you the state of you being drunk? Well, it's because they've been given alcohol. Children been given drugs like illegal drugs, like um, most likely like cocaine, because they also describing those big pockets of white powder that their father was separating in the small packets. I mean, I mean. We know what it is. So, and they're describing very eloquently how they felt when they've been given, given, given alcohol or when they've been given white powder. Um, so, and uh, and and then uh, they continued with the um, with explanation that. The, the babies were also sedated too. However, I mean, you know, <laughs> you can you can actually, yeah, it's like you can spend many, many hours uh, talking about uh, the details of it. But I would, you know, I would just, um, I would just suggest that the, um, that the listeners would just go and learn for themselves and watch testimonies, uh, and I think this is very important. This is very important because, I mean, first, you've got you've got to educate yourself. You've got to inform to inform yourself. You've got to inform yourself about what's going on, how it's been done, because you know if you're informed, 
you can actually you can become more aware of what's going on maybe in your area maybe in your church you know, or or something you know hiding under the church i mean because in in the uk a lot of churches are involved in that i mean we, we know that the catholic church is involved in that we know that vatican is involved in that. i mean look at the symbolism of vatican in the mosaics or in the decoration of vatican is all the satanic uh, symbolism there so yeah, uh, and uh, of course, we've run into that time and time and time again. We find that these occultists and Satanists are somehow involved in a church somewhere. Vic, I want to toss, uh, give it over to you for a question. Yeah, so one of the things that I'm so impressed with that's so unique in this case, Ella, is that not only did your kids have the ability to recall and articulate information that isn't usually leaked in these scenarios? I'm curious how they had access to so many, many details of the inner workings. So a lot of times when we hear stories of survivors, they know all about the rituals and the key players, but there was so much information about where the babies come from and what they do. And were they being, taught and groomed this stuff you know for for future reference because their information was just invaluable to the 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 underpinnings of the organization and how it runs usually we just get details about the rituals i see what you mean i see what you mean um the thing is because they were they are the children of the leader of that particular group okay i think that um most likely he was talking about this to them and i think he was he was he was teaching them he was educating them in this in this way so like for example uh, children had uh, uh, specific lessons of um, of sign language and this is we only spotted it uh, by chance when they were like making to each other uh, some signs about going um, somewhere in quiet place to touch each other, for example. And um, this why this why they were involved in that part, in that in the kind of the background work of this of this cult. Mm -hmm. mm, but as I said, I mean they they're very they're very smart pe uh, children. Um, and very observant, and um, and Alisa, she's like, she's just, she's just such a great, such an such an amazing mind, such an analytical mind. I mean, she remembers so many details. Mm -hmm. Who is involved in anything? I mean, children are knowing all of this. I mean, they've been they've been involved with this many years. Yeah. It's like they live in it. It's like the same thing as you ask a. Uh, a child, uh, you know, um, about his uh, his daily life, he never will tell you. It's just exactly the same thing. It's just they, it's been their daily life. I mean, they're in school from what? Uh, from uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, 8.30 until 2, until 4. Yeah. So it's like uh, then, then there were contacts, a, year, a whole year of contacts with, with him whole whole sat a saturday they know any they they told everything all of this the whole group that been this uh this uh, uh this ring that he was running before with all the uh, uh pornography it's not for movie making and i think this was his next career step in the school he came to the school with all the this already background uh, this uh of of making snap movies and all of this in child pornography and his marketing skills on the dark web, I mean. And by the way, by the way, there were um, there was some research done by someone um, in regards um, his company um, linked to certain. Um, I mean, there is connections. The, you know the um, certain websites 
with the same uh, IP address that actually advertising children for, uh, you know, porn. So, I mean, they've been, they've been living in that. Ellen, yeah. yeah. Um, I have a question. How did you guys, or how did you, I, I don't know, I, I'm wondering who made the decision. How did you pick the school that your children will go to? Well, uh, it was simply the school in our area. Um, okay. To be honest, I was not able, I mean, the... Um, there are a lot of private schools in the area and there is um, a lot of uh, state school and that was one of the state school okay but because it's in such a good air or such an expensive area this is one of the supposedly to be one of the good schools and it was simply in our range uh, my eldest son he went to another one um another state school like nearby in the same neighborhood and uh, that was it's just simply we got a space there but again it was it was supposed to be very difficult to get into the school and all of a sudden we've got one space after another so it could be that because of the demons connection to this network we got a space in this particular school i mean it could be very well be so and the children said that uh, you found out later on that their father was coming to the school. He was at the school. Um, Every day. Yeah. <laughs> and you thought that he was only seeing them on the Saturdays. At that time, he was not even supposed to be seeing he, them because what happened, um, as I said, we've been in and out of the court. Uh, in regards to this context, because to begin with, to begin with, I actually, um, it was no problem. I, 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 I've I been letting him seeing the children, let's say maybe every, almost every day for a couple of hours, because I thought, okay, you know, we're separated. I mean, our relationship didn't work. However, children do want to see his father, uh, their father. So I did let it happen. Uh, for a while and then I started to notice something something that I wasn't comfortable with children were coming quite distraught emotionally psychologically there was something not quite right they, they were the, the, they, their behavior was very strange secretive aggressive and uh, so and after those uh, violence towards myself where there was one specific uh, time where it was uh, quite dramatic and very serious i mean if it wasn't up to my up to my older son who called the police uh, i probably wouldn't be alive he almost almost killed me and that was in front of the children and when alisa tried to get involved he actually pushed her away she fell she hurt herself i mean it was a uh, a um, quite um, horrible situation and because I actually didn't let him take the children uh, to some party that he was going to take them and I believe that that party was to do with um, to do with um, to do with abuse to be honest it was some kind of a children's show in some VIP area we're supposed to go together to this party or to this to the show, but then he manipulated um, the situation in such a way that um, I got upset. James got upset, and so we didn't go at the end. So he said that it was the decision was made for him to go with the children, and then last minute something was telling me that something was not right there so i told him no 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 we're not going and he's lost it um and he attacked me and um and um so anyway this was um there was several incidents where i actually i i, I filed for emergency protection order this is how it all started this is how it went to the court uh, it, it came to the court 
or legal proceedings between us. And so the court actually granted him this contacts for a year until until he held um, but it was the it was the whole the whole time it was a um, uh, it was a battle because um, I mean not a battle because I could not do anything it was ordered by the court I had to do that I had to give him children for a whole day on Saturday but they were but children were coming um, sick physically they were vomiting almost every time after that they were like um, sick uh, like with fever and things like that and i just couldn't, couldn't understand why it's happening mm, i thought maybe there was some rubbish food he's giving them i mean who knows what was but they were not telling me anything i mean yeah yeah they went they went to here they went there but apparently they were taken to this uh, different places um, to, for example, some leisure center which been booked for that day for the private parties where all these people been involved, you know, um, or the, he's been taking them to this uh, uh, this soft uh, soft uh, center, you know, with all these different slides and everything, indoor center, where also apparently. Apparently, he was taking them there in disabled ro uh, rooms and uh, uh, abusing them there. And, I mean, the abuse has been involving all kinds of things, like putting some glue in their bottoms and they made them pull it out. I mean, filming it. I mean, it's just like really sick details. Uh, my point is that so it was going on for a year. Then... And then at, at some point he held them for three days at the unknown address and I could not do anything. I called the police, I, I said I don't know where my children are and they could not do anything because we share the par parental rights. Mm -hmm. So at that, at that, um, the, so anyway, there was a couple of incidents where he eventually actually gave up his parental rights voluntarily all of a sudden after all this battle and that was very very strange but I think he's already planned it he went away for two years in India and America so he must knew that he's going away so he just says okay you know I give up my parental rights so I had my so from that time on from 2011 I have a soul um, it's called uh, so residency order, order where I have like a, a one one parent uh, parental rights right. So when they say in the newspapers that it was a custody, a custody battle, this is total rubbish. I mean, there was no even reason to fight with him over parental rights. Are already being awarded a sole parental uh, sole uh, uh, parent rights. To my children, he didn't have it, so there was no there was no reason to for battle or even to fight over the contacts. But what happened two years um, after that, when he came back, uh, he didn't even get in contact with them during this time. Maybe there was few phone calls or few Skype calls there, and um, so at one point. At one point, um, and I was at the time I was seriously thinking to leave the UK, but my lawyer explained me that look, you cannot just take your children um, out of the country because they're British citizens, blah blah blah. You've got to first approach the father to get his consent, and he doesn't. I mean, the whole procedure. Then you go to the court and persuade the court that you know you have parental right. You can take them. The, the the court will probably give it give you give you this uh, permission. Anyway, so I followed the advice. You know, at that time I believed that the whole system is good, and you know, and it's all there for our protection. Da da da. So as majority of people believe that the police there is to protect us, that the uh, whatever you know. Right. Uh, so when he learned that. I'm. I want. I want to. I want to. I want to 
get out of the UK. And actually, I had a job offer in France. He said, no way. And before I knew, there was an anonymous call to one of the major um, child protection organization saying that I'm an abusive mother. I um, hit my children. I don't feed them. I keep them out on the street. The children going through the rubbish bins and things like that. I mean, total rubbish. But this is the time when social services got involved. I had to give up our children's pa um, passports. I could not leave the, uh, uh, the UK even for holidays. So, and this is, again, another uh, circle of uh, cycle of legal proceedings started. So, Ella, you're kind of um, getting into something I want to ask. Uh, Vic, I'm going to give you a chance to ask a question here next. But um, I believe it was Elisa or maybe both the children they disclosed that there was a plan to get you out of the picture and that their dad was working with CPS. He knew some people in the CPS and they were going to set you up or say that you were a bad mom or that, that, um, and I think, it, yeah, I think it was Gabriel. He said, uh, uh, that they were trying to get him to say that their mom was mean and their dad was really nice. Um, but, what you're saying there there seemed to be a plot you know with the cps to do this to get them away from you with the father exactly this is and this is some uh, this is what i was started to tell this is uh, what happened and this i'm talking about the event events one year before uh, this august 2014 when children finally disclosed it happened a year beforehand when social services got involved they started to investigate uh, me, uh, they started to come to my house, and then later children said that this guy who was coming to my house and so so called investigating me, he was also one of those that was coming to those uh, big sex parties on Wednesdays, and he knew father very well, and they were good friends, and so on. So, I mean, the whole thing was really like interconnected, you know. Uh, everybody knows everybody all of a sudden. So, at the, but obviously at that time I had no idea. And school was against me. Um, even school was actually giving uh, statements that, yeah, they is true, you know, children are coming coming to school hungry, they um, begging for food from, um, for uh, other children to give them food and things like that. And, uh, and then also there was uh, something they said about that uh, they heard the ch children told them that they saw under fat they had to go to and uh, look through the rubbish bins on the street. I mean, like ridiculous things like that. Mm -hmm. However, however, at some so anyway, because of that, because of that, children, uh, court took all of this in consideration and granted the father access to the children one unsupervised uh, contact again and this is this contact been going on for like uh, only for one or two months before this august 2014. Mm. he's only uh, received this um context like uh in may 2014 and then you know and then 2000 uh, the august came and this is disclosures happened and, and now you know and now, you know the how it happened afterwards so yeah Go ahead. so ella obviously our hope and our prayer and our efforts are going to be towards getting you reunited with your kids as soon as possible but in the scenario that they turn 18 are you or the children then given more legal rights by way of contacting one another, talking to each other, reuniting. It, is there anything magic there in, in the age 18? Well, I mean, formally, yes. Formally, children, yes, the, they're becoming adults and independent. However, who knows what's been going on all these years. Mostly, li most likely, they've been abused. In the same in the same manner, most likely um, 
they've been in the same, they've been, they've been um, programmed in the same manner by the same network and by the same methods. Um, and uh, we know that uh, they were looked after by the foster carer. However, we also learned that the foster carer, the carer was actually him. He's telling, he's saying that in this video, in this police video that I was referring earlier, he was laughing and say, well, you know, mm, yeah, I mean, it was just a, a there was a smoke screen um, created by the social services that children are been looked, um, then they, they've been under uh, social services kind of protection or care plan or whatever. However, uh, foster care was me. So we don't know. We don't know. I mean, even though so called they're going to be independent, I mean, are they going to be allowed? Yeah. Or they, how they controlled uh, 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 are they? I don't know. I also, someone, uh, someone, Someone told me recently that it could be that you are alive because children been 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 uh, been quiet as well because children know how to access me. Mm -hmm. um, they know my email address. Uh, I mean, it's not that I mean there is in, everything now is in the open. I mean, there's social media. Everybody's got the accounts now. I mean. Mm -hmm. But it could be, I mean, it could be that as well. So I'm not quite sure if, if, if we just have to sit down, uh, sit and wait until they're 18 and then we're in, you're united. I mean, I doubt. Ella, um, you've been just kind of um, thrust into this nightmare back. Um, in uh in 2014 or, or it was actually before that it was in uh it was uh the august or the september before that when when you begin to uh understand all this stuff and you've been dealing with this you know for so long it's been so long since you've seen your children um what um you haven't been able to be a mother to them what do you miss about um about spending time with them or you know being a mother to elisa and gabriel i've been robbed i've been robbed this this amazing time being with my children seeing them growing from the time they were eight and nine i mean they they're almost adults and i haven't known them hmm. and i mean how yeah. sad is that? I mean, it's like this is is I mean, this is the what 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 could be most joyful? I mean, seeing your children growing, and uh, I mean, I've been with them like uh, up to like eight and nine, like. This is, was uh, my world, my children, and all of a sudden, I don't have them in my life. I mean, I mean, that was, uh, it was, uh, it was very hard. I don't know how I kept sanity, I mean, during all these years, I mean, I suffered uh, horrible depression for the first two years. Uh, I remember when children were taken, I remember I was so shocked. I could not get out of bed for, 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 I don't know, maybe a week. I didn't eat. Uh, it was the only thing that I had a puppy that I was taking her for a walk and feeding her. But uh, I remember I was like, uh, I was like frozen, shocked. And, um, you know, I suffered PTSD. I don't, I maybe still do. I mean, this is a, this is a horrible situation for. I mean, this is probably the worst thing for any parent, so apart from physically losing their ch children. However, you know, I'm 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 grateful my children are alive at least. 
I hope so. Ella, if you could, um, if you could give them a message right now, if you could speak to them, um, what message would you give Elisa and Gabriel? I would never give up on you. It doesn't matter what, what it's going to cost me. The website is HampsteadExposed.com and that's where you can learn about the case and about what's taken place um, uh, for uh, 10 years now. And uh, this is the uh, reality that um, Ella has been dealing with and uh, she's put all of the information on the website and you can see the petitions, you can see um, where you can support her in her legal fight. And as she's corrected me, it's our legal fight for our children. And uh, because they're coming after all of our children. Uh, Ella, you said something yesterday that really um, uh, stuck with uh, Vicky and I. And that's that this is not entertainment. The, the, these are the lives of your children and you and people have a uh, have an interest in true crime and things like this but it's time that we stop being shocked and we start acting could you speak to that again tonight i know it's shocking but it's no need to be shocked i mean it's time that we need to get over it about being shocked about horrified i mean these children are suffering the tremendous abuse as we speak and it's a lot of them and um, i mean how can we how can we live our normal lives when this is happening how can we you know watch tv you know entertain ourselves and um, and leave as nothing's going on. I mean, look, uh, this could happen to anyone. And this has happened to many, 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 many people, many parents. Uh, it just, you know, they go, mainly they go, for example, of course, for single mother, mothers, they go for disadvantaged, disadvantaged uh, families people who cannot protect themselves or have no means or maybe education or the complex to, to, to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. And this is why we don't really hear that. I mean, of course, and of course you know, nobody, nobody in media talks about it. And if they do, like, for example, recently there was a case of, um, of some priest found with, um, you know, been, been charged and given like I don't know 25 years in prison and so on but this is because it's so much so much in the public um, it's, it became such a public knowledge and because there's so much information coming out they have to do something oh yeah you know they caught one 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 child abuser yeah, let's let's punish him, da da da. So public say, oh yeah, yeah, something been done, you know. Look, uh, this uh, someone been charged and in prison and blah blah blah. But oh, there is so much psyops, you know, like this queuing on going on with all these underground facilities and children being rescued, blah blah. It's all just blah blah blah. There is no hard facts or, of all of this being happening. And if so, where are these children? Where are these rescued children? Where are these documented uh, evidence? Where are any of the evidence? So I believe that's all been done for, to really to put, to put, to put the herd back to sleep. To, to put the sheep back to sleep. You know, yeah, yeah, someone's doing something. So I'm okay, I don't have to do anything. This is kind of attitude being propagated. 
I mean, don't you don't don't you everybody see what's been what's been happening during this pandemic time? All this, all this uh, theater that been happening in the whole world mm-hmm. for for the economy being killed. I mean, don't you see that you're living in 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 in, in the in total slavery? Don't you see that you're paying the taxes to actually support the same police force that abusing your children? Your taxes going to your social services who is abusing and taking your children and selling them into the slave into the sexual slavery. I mean I mean, if you think that it's happening somewhere else, you're very, very much mistaken. It's, it's happening on your doorstep, and your child could be next, your grandchild could be next, and you cannot do anything. When they come as a gang and take your child, like they do, like you see in the videos, these people cannot do anything. They don't know where they're children, ever. 